Before you start learning 3D fashion, let's take a pause. Let's understand what 3D fashion is and give your learning a structure so that you don't waste time and can be highly efficient in learning. Hi, my name is Vivek. I am the founder of Learn 3D Fashion Platform. I have taught more than 2800 students across 10 plus countries who comes from brands and institutions like Harvard, Nike, FIT, UAL and across the world. So, in this tutorial, let me give you an understanding of how 3D fashion works, right? And how do you need to structure your learnings so that you can be highly efficient and you can enjoy the process of 3D designing. All right, so now let's quickly jump into the five different stages of 3D fashion and how those stages uh, can help you to structure your learning. So the five stages are 3D modeling, finishing, texturing, rendering, and animation. So now let's go through each and individual stages one by one and let's understand what are the different topics uh, that are very essential to it, right? And how to structure it. So the first stage is called modeling. If you will see, modeling is about converting a basic shape into a dress, right? So for example, a basic torso into a dress. Now, because we are into the field of fashion designing, so for us, uh, Technicality really important, right? Because you also need to, maybe in future, you need to convert this into a physical pattern, right? So even when you are designing it, the technical aspect of fashion designing is very important. Therefore, pattern making becomes highly essential. So in the modeling, so we do modeling, we do conversion of a basic torso into a dress via pattern making. Okay, so understanding pattern making concepts becomes highly important. The software that we use is Clo, Marvelous Designer, Browseware, Optitex, Tukat. You can use any software. Guys, look. Softwares are just a tool, right? That you do to achieve a certain things, right? Softwares will keep changing as we go into the future. Right now, Clo is something a very prominent. Clo and Browseware, I think these are the two very prominent software that are being used, okay? So in future, maybe there is some other softwares, okay? So if your concepts are right, then you can always change the softwares and you need to learn multiple software. That should not be a problem. Softwares, you just need to figure out the tools. That's all the software is all about, right? So don't learn the software, learn the concept via softwares, okay? So these are the different software that you can use. The different topics which becomes highly essential for 3D modeling is garment construction and pattern making. So understanding different kinds of garments, how they are constructed, how their patterns are constructed, understanding the different concepts like dart manipulations, flares, gathering, style lines, add fullness, yokes, <clears throat> tucks, pleats, tucks, uh, grading, and all these topics become highly important, okay? So first stage, modeling, garment construction, pattern making becomes highly important. So this is how you can do this. Now, let's talk about the second stage. The second stage is called finishing. Now, what is finishing is all about? Finishing is about making your designs more realistic. Ha, look, why we use 3D software? So let's first understand this. So the process of sampling is very costly in fashion, right? So suppose uh, you want to show, you have a shirt, right? You want to show like 50 different variation of those shirts. So every time going and trying to figure out the fabric, or trying to figure out the trims and all those things, it's highly costly, then stitch it. So this process is getting simplified through 3D, right? Softwares like Clo, Browseware and all, right? So finishing is about adding seams, adding trims, right, to your garment so that it look realistic. So in the finishing process, it becomes very important to understand how the garments are constructed and how the trims are used. So the two topics that becomes highly important is the garment seams and construction. So for example, the knitwear, they, we use different kinds of machines. For example, for example, woven, we use different kinds of machines. If you want to understand more about the seams and the construction, there is this standard called ASTM standards. Right? You can follow that standard. It gives you basically all the different kinds of seams which are used in all these. Uh, it has a set of standards, right, that they follow. That every industry follow, right? Like every garment and manufacturing industry follows. So, now, second is the trims, right? How do you create different kinds of trims? How do you create personalized trims, buttons, zippers, lining, interlining, and all these things, okay? So, two topics. Second topic is, first was modeling. Second is finishing. In finishing, there are two really important topics called garment seams and construction and trims and accessories. What do finishing do? Finishing adds realism to your designs. 
Okay. For example, this is a shirt right now. You see there is a top stitch in the shirt. Okay. The way the collar, you stitch a collar is you stitch it first and then you turn it inside out, right? So there is this double-sided kind of a fabric that feel comes in, right? You have the button, you have this buttonhole. Again, you have the top stitch here. So all these different kinds of detailing, this really adds up, right? If you want to present your design a really nice way. Okay, the next thing is texturing. Texturing is about adding fabrics uh, to your designs, okay? Now, there are two highly essential topics uh, are is called fabric construction, understanding the fabric construction. So, suppose what the fabric is made up of, cotton, polyester, what kind of a weave the fabric, stobby weave, jacquard weave, plain weave, twill weave, satin weave, all the different kinds of weave structures, right? Then understanding different kinds of uh, finishing that you do, right? So, for example, is it a surface print, right? What kind of a print you have done on top of it? Is it a is is it a garment dye, right? What kind of a dyeing you have done, right, on the garment or on the fabric? Sometimes the garments are dyed, sometimes the fabrics are dyed before. Sometimes the threads are of different uh, the yarn dyeing. So there are different kinds of dyeing that happens, right? So you need to understand that uh, basic things about fabrics, right? Second is about understanding how to communicate those uh, properties, right? Uh, to a uh, like in, in the 3D space, right? So, let's talk about few different maps, and this is just to make you understand what are the different topics that you need to actually understand to complete 3D fashion. Don't be overwhelmed by it, right? You can always go back and you can see, okay, right now I want to do 3D modeling, these are the topics, right? Now I want to do this, these are the topics I want to understand. So, so the first, uh, the different kinds of maps are. For example, the first map is base color. So what does a base color do? Base color basically is a color map, right? So for example, if you take some image from Photoshop, right? You put it as a print, right? That is kind of your base map. Every, all the color information is communicated through this. Second is called a normal map. So normal map basically communicates weave, right? So for example, if you have a dog, so have you seen the twill weave, right? Uh, like it is kind of diagonal, it goes, right? So that is a structure, right? And that is what the normal maps communicate. It communicates way much more, more than that. But that's for the time being, just understand that, okay? The third is height map. Height map is about, suppose you have a rubber print, right? Now, or embroidery, right? So the, the embroidery or the rubber print, it's, it kind of come out from the fabric, right? So how do you communicate that? So you use height map or sometimes it's called displacement map also. One last thing is opacity map, right? So how... For example, if you have a sheer fabric, right, you want to create opacity, right? So you are going to use opacity map for it. You also have roughness map and metallic map. Suppose you want to communicate the roughness and metallic property. So for that, these are the two maps that you use. Now, we don't use these maps separately, okay? All these things are combined kind of in a way. In a fabric, everything is combined, okay? And that's how we, or sometimes two maps, sometimes three maps, sometimes four maps. So that's how we create a complete fabric. A simple video I'm going to show you, like, look, this this looks like a fabric, right? Uh, and uh, the reason is this because, oh, like, the prints, the fabric, you will see, right? All these things, right, add up to this and it makes things look a little bit more like realism, add realism to the fabric. Okay, now, we have covered three, okay, topics. First is modeling, second is finishing, Third is texturing. Now it's time for rendering. Okay, so rendering is about setting up lights and cameras so that you can you can bring all the objects that you have put right. The modeling, finishing, texturing. Now you you put lights, you put camera, and then you can do a photo shoot. It's like a photo shoot. Okay, yeah. So you are doing a photo shoot. That's a exact way of saying it. So suppose you are doing a photo shoots. So this is how you do. Okay, so this was a bag which we designed right, and then we bring it to an environment, right? To a scene, we create an environment for it. And we like, it's like a product shoot that you're doing, right? So this is, this is how realistic your designs are going to look once you render it, okay? So two topics become highly important for rendering. One is understanding the environment, understanding how to create different kinds of environment, Understanding different file types. So there are OBJ, FPX, uh, different kinds of file types that you can import, right? 
and there are multiple free resources out there that you can import your design. So for example, this chair, we haven't designed it. We have we have used a plugin, uh, right? And we have just bring this uh, uh, like the 3D object, right? From some other software to our platform or to Clo or to Blender, whichever software you want to use. So understanding environments become highly important. Second is lights and camera. So different kinds of light setup, how does that impact your designs, right? And then how does, for example, focal angle of a camera, all these things. So understanding first how to create an environment because you are telling a story. So what is rendering is all about? It is about telling a story about the designs that you have created, okay? So first you create that story through props, through environment. Second is how do you capture that story? You capture that story through lights and camera so these are the two important aspects so let's see some of the community work so again all these work is done by like the students right kind of so you will you will see right this this is pretty easy like if and like if they can do it you can do it i don't see a i don't see a reason why you can't do it right it's just that you can make things way much more realistic okay so now we have talked about four things right I'm repeating myself because I want to keep revising you this. Modeling, finishing, texturing and rendering. Alright. Now the final stage is called animation. Animation is adding life to your designs. This is the most fun part of about 3D fashion. This is one of the most interesting part I'll say. But it becomes a little complicated because you have to use multiple softwares to do this. Okay. But again, I'll just show you a simple explanation how animation works right and then you can take it from there this is uh, again our community project and i think i put the tutorial for doing the same thing also in the course okay so first uh let's let's just see the animation okay so what happens is just that this is an avatar you animate this avatar okay you can use software like miximo daz make human all these things for creating avatars and then for uh animating it right and then what you can do is this, you can bring this animation to Clo or Browseware, right? And then you can just put the garment on top of it, right? And then you can just play the animation. So the garment is going to follow how the avatar moves, right? So this is a simple gig. Now you can take it to the software like Blender, right? Where you can put the shoes, where you can get give a football, right? It's moving, right? And there's a kick, right? So this simple animation, as you see, right like this this is how you make simple animations and you can add it it's a very simple process it's just that you need to multiple like you need to multiple like use different softwares right so it becomes a little tricky but this is a very fun process in the whole 3d thing right so this is how uh simple uh 3d fashions are one another i'm going to quickly show you it's called uh the wind animation right so you can get get, get a garment right just give a wind property, add it to the blender. You can, by the way, do it in Glow also. It's just that the quality of render that comes in Blender is better. So we use Blender, but please don't worry about it. Start simple, okay? You don't have to go to the extreme of everything. Just start simple and start integrating the learnings. I will say animation is a little tricky, okay? So it's going to take some time, but finish everything till rendering really nicely. Okay, next is so two topics become really important for animations. First is avatar and rigging. Second is animation. Okay. So how do you create different avatars? You can use make human. You can use dial softwares. How do you rig it? You rig it. Basically, there are bones in the avatar. You just move, right? So for rigging, we use Miximo, right? And then how do you combine different animation? You can use Blender. You can use DAS for it. Okay. And then it's all about taking your avatar the whole animation of the avatar to glow, put your garment, animate the garment and bring both the things together. Okay. And render it. That's all. It's pretty easy. Okay. So this is all the topic. Let me revise it again. Modeling, finishing, texturing, rendering, and finally animation. So these are the five different stages of 3D fashion and all the topics that I've shown. You can guys look before you start learning glow. Okay. I would highly suggest you you watch it, you make the notes and whenever you are doing, suppose, uh, let me, let me give it a, uh, let me, suppose you are, uh, 
suppose you are starting learning Clo 3D, okay? So how do you need to do this, okay? So you need to say, okay, right now I'm going to do the first stage properly, that is modeling. So what I need to do for modeling, first is I need to understand the basic concept of pattern making. And I also need to understand the basics of uh, editing tool in Clo, right? That's all. Those are the two things, right? Once you're done with the modeling, once the pattern making concepts are clear, then you move towards the next topic called pattern making. Okay. Once the pattern making, oh, oh, sorry, next topic called finishing. Once the finishing is done, you understood how to give top stitches, how to use normal maps, how to give puckering, right? All these different kinds of concepts, how to add buttons, how to add zippers, right? Once you understand all those things, then you move towards the next topic called texturing. How do I create fabrics? How do I, how, how do I create different images that I can combine together? so that I, my fabric looks amazingly realistic. That's the next thing. Once that's done, then think about uh, rendering. Okay, how do I keep my lights? How do, just take, just go to Google, just search few things, right? How photo shoots happens, right? How do I set up my light? What should be the focal angle of the camera, right? All these, how do I create environments? How do I bring different props uh, in Glow? Or how do I take my garment from Glow to different software like Blender, okay? So uh, then it comes uh, the animation, right? How do I animate my object, right? So all those different things, like they add up, right? And it makes really, really fun learning it and you will not be lost, okay, in the process. Great. So look, I run this course at learn3dfashion.com. Our job is, uh, like, I really love 3D fashion and I think the way it's moving forward is going to change the industry. So everyone should learn it, okay? So you can join our platform. You can uh, like really uh, find uh, like this is this is the really good course. I've structured everything for you. There are more than five software that we covered. So I think uh, you're going to like you're going to enjoy the whole process, okay, of learning things together and learning things with people. So if you are kind of that guy who needs kind of sub look, when I was learning 3D fashion, I wasted a lot of my time in searching in Google basic things, right? So I think what uh, a community support does to you is that it really helps you to stop wasting your time, give a structure to your learning and start getting feedbacks on your work because feedbacks are really important because if you don't get the feedbacks, your quality of work will not improve, right? So that's how, uh, and that's why I have designed this course. If you are interested, you can go and you can check the link, learn3dfashion.com and um and you can join if you want um all right so this is how you need to start learning clo in 2024 and uh, if you have done some amazing work put a drive link in the comment section i'll i'll give you some feedbacks no worries okay enjoy life guys take care if you have decided to learn clo 3d it's really good it's going to take um uh, like, it's going to take some time, but you're going to enjoy the process, okay? So, don't worry. It's going to pay off well. Your time will be worth it, right? The time that you're giving. And I, I wish you all the very best, okay? Send me some of your work in the comment section. I will surely see it and give you some comments. Take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy life.